Oh man, so it's a big day in the market today as the market waits for Fed Chairman Jerome Powell to speak after his FOMC meeting. What impact is this going to have on Bitcoin? We can see Bitcoin is sitting trying to get above the 38,000 mark. Let's take a look here. You can see here we're sitting at 37,920 trying to get above 38,000 which would be a real coup considering it was not long ago just a couple of candles ago we were as low as 32.933 on that wick down here bouncing quite nicely off the 32 mark not actually heading lower which is great because remember the critical level is 29 if we fall below 29 we've created a lower low and we enter a longer term downward trend from a technical basis okay if we could turn around here like i've been saying for a while if this could actually be the floor and we can start to turn around that could then indicate we continue to be on a long-term weekly upward trend. But a long way to go here, guys. You can see here, you've got the peaks here of this downward channel here. We need this candle here on the daily to at least get to the EMA ribbon and start breaking this EMA ribbon. We're talking about levels such as 40,000 first to touch the EMA ribbon. And then we need to climb through 41, 43, and 44, getting well into the EMA ribbon before we can get some confidence. Because remember, look here, when we had the initial run out, when we broke from this wedge, which we covered on this channel, you can see we ran all the way into our EMA ribbon and then still got rejected so we really need a flippening to happen of this ema ribbon for us to turn bullish and that's going to take a lot of work guys and ultimately that's looking at prices around forty five thousand. so a lot of work to do here but this is the first step getting us from 32 to back to 38 you see how quickly the market can change back and it's doing so even in a volatile and tentative market i mean let's flip on over to look at the futures market because the futures market is very interesting you've got the dow jones opening up a percent you've got S&P futures opening at 1.36% and Nasdaq up 2%. Now, granted, we can't just take the futures as gospel because we know we've had futures opening up green and then the market you uh, doing a complete yo-yo and you turning red intraday and then closing green again. We're in a crazy market right now, but it's interesting that given... Um, Jerome Powell will be speaking in the next few hours to summarize uh, the FOMC meeting he's had with uh, his other senior leaders. Um, we are expecting some turmoil in the market. Now, what are the different kind of situations that can play out right now and by the way guys if you appreciate this type of content where i go into the macroeconomics because right now a lot of channels a lot of ta guys who are popular on youtube let's be honest they don't know what they're talking about right they're great ta chartists but they don't understand what's going on in the wider economy and therefore when bitcoin is this low they can't even tell you why there's not even one mention of inflation or interest rates or fed chairman or jerome powell or like are they are they serious are they just looking at chart patterns and saying oh this is a head and shoulders pattern therefore place a leverage trade link below it's not how it works, guys, okay? So if you appreciate this, and it, sometimes it takes a little bit of listening to to start learning this, smash up the like button and subscribe because I'm committed to sharing my research with you, my findings, anything I'm doing for my own investments, I'm just committed to sharing that with you. No hidden agenda, no me saying oh, this coin's going to the moon. What I see is what I share. So what are the different outcomes? Well, Jerome Powell's going to come out and what the market is looking for is for him to come out a little bit dovish. Now, I don't think that's going to be the case. Dovish means, you know, uh, uh, not not talking too much about tightening monetary policy. Hawkish, on the other hand, is when you come out and say, we're going to have a lot of interest rate hikes. We're really going to tighten our monetary policy. And that could spook the market. If the market is spooked, if the stock market is spooked, i.e. the S&P and the Nasdaq is spooked, that will lead to a risk off appetite for investors. Just to simplify these things, guys, risk off then means crypto starts to fall because crypto is considered a risk on asset. Very simple, uh, you know, just back, back of a fag packet. That's how you would explain it. OK, so now what would be amazing, which I don't think is going to happen, is if a uh, drone power comes out and says, nope, this whole premise of four interest rate hikes this year is not going to happen. It'd be amazing if he said that. I don't think he's going to go over as far as to say that. The thing I do think was, I don't think there'll be interest rate hike today. That would shock markets if he announced an interest rate hike today as of January. Okay, because he has said in previous meetings, he will finish his tapering before interest rates. So we have to trust that he's a man of his words. He won't want to spook the market. Okay, that's one step. But what, we, what I do expect is, I expect for him to announce that the first interest rate hike will be in March. Now the question comes, how high do we think that interest rate hike is going to be? Most of the market has probably priced in a 0.25, a 25 basis points hike in interest rates. If he comes out with a 50 basis points hike in March, again, that could spook the market. So we need to listen carefully for what he announces. Also, 
I think the other interesting angle which could now come out in this conversation is Jerome Powell, he's going to continue to talk about inflation being there, being persistent, not being transitory as initially he was led to believe. And then he's going to talk about the fact that he's going to use all his tools to address this inflation. And interest rates is just one of those, right? The other thing he can do, because the whole premise around inflation is there's too much excess liquidity in the market. He needs to suck some of that liquidity back out, right? He needs to grab it all back out of the market. Because before he was just pumping it in the market, printing money, printing money, printing money. He overdid that, right? Now he needs to start taking some up. So what he may start speaking about is once his tapering is finished, he may announce a plan to start shrinking his balance sheet. Now, all that means is over this period of time, 120 billion of assets, mortgage-backed securities and other assets, were purchased every single month by the Fed. Okay, as you can imagine, the balance sheet increases. They're buying all these bonds and assets, okay? Now he can announce a plan to say, I want to shrink that, the trillion-dollar balance sheet. I want to start shrinking it down, and this is the rate I'm going to do it at. Again, the terms of how he does so and when he does so could spook the market. The market does not want liquidity out. Liquidity out of the market is bad for risk on stocks such as high-tech growth stocks and therefore our Bitcoin and our favorite altcoins, of course, which follow Bitcoin. Really, really important we understand that. Hopefully, that those few minutes explanations were useful for you guys. We need to keep um, up to date with what Jerome Powell says at 2 p.m. Eastern time. I surely will post an update after he's done to see what's happening with the Bitcoin price. But for now, let's look at some of the technicals. And like I said, we're still a little bit off here on our daily from getting back to our EMA ribbon, okay? So we need to get above the 38.405 mark, okay? And then the 40,132 level I've got here. So these two yellow lines I've got drawn here, really important. If I head over into the four hourly, let's see if we can get a better view of this here. Here we go. So there's your 3850. Really important we can break through that and retest. Once you break through that, you'll see here on our four hourly, that would enable us to be bullish. We flipped our EMA ribbon on the four hourly. That's a good first step. If we can get bullish again on our four hourly EMA ribbon and clear bullishness, pushing through 40,000 and heading towards 41 in this kind of a direction, that would set the tone. Okay. Now, remember, for this to happen, we're going to need some good news from the Fed, right? We're going to need some of those dovish tonalities, or at least if they're being hawkish, hawkish to the extent that the market is expecting, right? Like a March increase. Yep, we're carrying on with our taper. March increase of 25 basis points. Um, and maybe even just saying something to the effect of, you know, we don't want to crash the economy. We're cognizant of the effect this could have on the economy. Because let's face it, the market has already corrected 10% on the S&P. Okay, so this is not what the Fed necessarily wants, but it's not their main aim. The Fed's aim is not to prop up the stock market. It's to manage monetary policy. And that's what they're trying to do. They manage inflation, manage monetary policy. Very important. And employment, of course. So that's our upside, what we want to see to the upside. Now, we've got to prepare for the downside as well, guys. We can't miss out on this fact. If we get some bad news and the market is spooked and we see the Nasdaq fall by, you know, 2 3% or more, God forbid, then you're looking at Bitcoin start falling back to the levels of 32. And we need to see, can we hold support at 30? If things are terrible, again, hate to say it, but we need to start looking at the 30,000 level. These are the important levels. And remember, if we fall below 29, things get a little bit more scary at that point, because then you've created that lower low, which I was sharing with you guys over the last few videos on our weekly chart. Okay. So very important guys. Hope you guys found this update useful. As always, guys, it's not just about technical analysis. We need to bring the fundamentals into play. I can sit here and show you all the different chart patterns and this and that, but ultimately Fed Chairman Jerome Powell is going to speak. When he speaks, it's going to move the market. The one good sign we've had is we've shown some good strength. We didn't fall below 32. We managed to hold our own, managed to pick now back up, sitting comfortably at 37.8. But we know the market can move quickly. Just as quickly as it can move to the upside, it can move to the downside. So we need to wait for these catalysts to play out to see where we head to over the next few days. Really important meeting. We'll be cut, um, I probably won't cover it live here, but what I will do is once the market's moved after his comments, we'll jump on and do another Bitcoin update. So as always, guys, if you appreciate these types of videos and you want to see the videos like this, smash up the like button and subscribe so I know this type of content is what you're looking for. As always, if you want to support this channel, consider becoming a member, guys. You can become a member here on uh, YouTube. That way you get a nice emoji next to your name and a bunch of perks. And some of those perks include the fact that you'll get access to our community thread. And our community thread, which is just for members only, 
is somewhere where you can ask questions one-on-one -on, -one on your favorite coins, your favorite crypto, your portfolio, and I can give you some non-financial advice as a priority there for members only. As always, link in the description is a link to our free public Discord server. Head over into there, meet over 400 like-minded people who are dedicated uh, to learning and investing in crypto, guys. As I say, new crypto investor and trader is born every single day. So it's really important that we create this community and educate each other, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, pump and dumps, a lot of YouTube channels just saying this coin to the moon, this coin to the moon, 100x leverage, 30x leverage. Let's avoid that. Let's do things in a transparent and sustainable way, because that's the only way to build sustainable wealth in crypto. As always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.